Hello, name's Phil Haynes. I'm 50 years old. I'm from Bromsgrove in Worcestershire. Uh, firstly, thank you to Anna for giving people a chance to air their views and uh, their thoughts and fears and concerns about what's going on at the moment. I actually did a, a, a recording on Sunday, which is over 40 minutes long, and uh, we've tried everything. We just cannot send it, but I was hoping to send that over anyway. But here we go. So to do this very, very quickly, um, this virus scenario that we're experiencing at the moment, and I call it a virus scenario because that's exactly what it is. Um, this has been no surprise to me after looking at things for many, many, many years. It's um, the continuation of something that's ongoing. So whilst it's a new scenario, it's still part of the same agenda, although the agenda is really kind of the wrong word to use. Um, firstly, to say something nice, uh, we are the creators, all of us. We think, we feel, and from those thoughts and feelings comes our world. We do need to get a hold of our own minds, and if we control our own minds and our own thoughts, that creates our world the way we want it to be. If we don't, um, we can be used rather like a host to a parasite, which means that thoughts get fed into us and we create the world that somebody else wants. It runs very, very deep um, into levels of consciousness, but there's not a lot of time here to talk about that. So switching back to the immediate things that are happening outside of us, which we are kind of the cause of, but anyway, the virus scenario. Um, we've been uh, locked away, we've uh, been made to wear masks, um, we've been told all kinds of what, you, you know, what would be called uh, rules and orders, we've had our civil liberties removed from us, um, and it all looks normal at first, you know, there's this really scary virus that we all need to lock down for, that we need to shut everybody down so we don't see each other or go near each other. I want to be respectful to people who've suffered, people who've lost their lives, because it's always a sad thing. We wouldn't want that to happen to anybody, and, and nobody would. Um, there is a fact that there's, you know, an awful lot of people die every year, and nearly 60 million on the planet every year. I believe it's somewhere between 15 and 1,700 in this country alone every week. Um, but still respect to people who have suffered and, and experienced suffering. Um, the problem is, though, that life goes on, and um, we have to consider the living. Um, so we're seeing now um, something that I've been talking about for quite some time, having looked at statistics myself, that the statistics are very, very wrong. And uh, I was saying this some time ago, and so are other people. Um, so these statistics that, that are coming out are showing that um, testing hasn't been going exactly as it ought to be going. Uh, there are problems with the testing, I understand, that most of the tests that are carried out don't actually um, isolate a COVID-19 virus. What they actually do is show that you've got a level of coronavirus in your system. Um, so that means you could, it will show that you've got antibodies of any flu, cold, or if you've had a flu jab. Now that could be anybody at any time. So if you can imagine, in Leicester, it got locked down for 0.15% of its population um, testing positive. That's because I believe several uh, testing stations had opened up in the area. But what if these tests don't actually isolate COVID-19? It means you've locked down a whole city, ruining the economy even further, ruining people's mental health and general health, um, for 0.15% of its population simply testing positive. Go and have a look at Carl Hennigan's work, anybody who hasn't seen it before. Or, sorry, not his work, for the things he's saying at the moment, an important guy at the moment, I would say. Um, we've got um, schools going back shortly. And when schools go back, it is being said that they want to test the children. Please bear in mind that with the removal of our civil rights and liberties in March, which we just sat back and allowed to happen, it was also made, um, made capable that we can be removed from our homes. When the children go back into their schools, if they're tested in school and many of them test positive, which could easily happen, what happens then? We'll have been lined up for a vaccine, a mass vaccination programme, for a flu, that is, uh, or a virus that's got the mortality rate, basically of a flu. And the way they've got to that level is by having lots of all those figures, they've got to do it by um, putting down COVID-19 on death certificates that, that weren't COVID-19, by the tests I've just explained. Um, so we've got something really, really wrong happening here and around the world. It's coordinated. Um, it didn't just happen overnight, it was well planned. Um, I don't think I've got very much time to speak. I could speak for a long, long time on, on this. Um, what I would say is please become alert. Um, you're seeing everybody in the shops wearing masks. Um, there's a different meaning to the mask, in my opinion. It doesn't mean 
oh, I've got to be protected from a virus. We need to look at what the statistics are for ourselves. We need to look beyond what the mainstream news tells us. And we need to make our own decisions. This means grabbing our own minds back. We've been put into severe fear. And that's a bad place to be. You can be fearful for a bit when that bear chases you through the, through the woods and you want to escape. And when you get away, it's all over and you go calm again. The 24-7 fear. It makes your immune system bad. Being locked away makes your immune system bad. Covering your mouth up keeps, makes your immune system bad. It makes you poorly. What is the plan going on here? I think I know what it is, and I think many people are starting to realise too. Um, people, um, last week I helped people to add people to come together in my own town, and this coming weekend, this Saturday, tomorrow, there's a big meeting in Birmingham. Get down to those meetings, write to your MPs, constantly write to your MPs, write to the PM. Do whatever you can do, because these are really serious times. I wish everybody all the very best, and I wish you all great love. You're more powerful than you'd ever know.